when you were here last week, uh, it was just before the House voted. We knew what they were just about to do on two things I want to talk to you about this morning. Obamacare, we'll get to that next, but then on food stamps. Um, and uh, they lined up the votes and they ripped it out, right? $40 billion? $40 billion, 5% cut. And the vote was close. And yeah. all the reporters were in the gallery watching the big board where once a member votes, his name goes up in red or green. And uh, it was close. There were 15 Republican defections. And if they had had only five more, that thing would have gone down. And it would have been another epic uh, Boehner leadership snafu. But that's not what happened. It passed. It passed. So what does, what's this mean for the program? This means that four million or so people <laughs> will would lose their benefits next year were this bill to become law in its entirety. But, of course, it's got to go through the Democratic set and, and the conferees, the conference committee between the two chambers. So certain parts of it really have a chance of becoming law because they'll have to compromise. Mm -hmm. And Senate Democrats are on board with cutting food stamps a little bit. Right. So they'll probably give a little more. So the the the, the gap is between five billion in the, uh, I, as I understand it, in the Senate and forty billion in the House. Right. right. Yeah. So somewhere in between. But uh, but food stamp the food stamp program is definitely going to be cut. Yeah, I, and de Democrats I believe think they have to sign on with it, a small cut at least because that will maintain public support for the program. There's no one out there except for you know very small minority that is not even very vocal saying no we ought to expand food stamps no one is out there sticking up for the right of poor people to buy junk food or soda or crab legs at the supermarket and that is the image in the public imagination of food stamps that the opponents have been able to paint and it's it's extremely powerful for the simple reason that people hate waiting in line and if you're in line behind someone with an ebt card you don't like it because it sometimes takes longer I think I asked you this before. You always use this phrase, EBT card. Electronic Benefits Transfer. That's the, oh. the debit card that all I got it. food stamps are distributed on. And uh, so it's the EBT card for the SNAP program. It is supposed to be discreet, but people know. Oh. They see that that's not a normal debit card or credit card. Now, Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro was here the day after you were last week on Wednesday. And she was telling us that there are, uh, I think she said, as many as 12 Republican Tea Party members who are leaders of the gang to either get rid of or to drastically reduce food stamps, who on the other side of the ag bill get huge ag subsidies for their farming operations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like there, Stephen Stephen Fincher, Fincher of Tennessee. Tennessee. He and uh, Doug LaMalfa from California were, are on the ag committee. And so not only supported cutting food stamps, while at the same time they, they each have received millions from the other side of the farm bill, they were citing the Bible uh, in defense of, of not feeding the poor. Uh, and the, 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 great, the classic line from Fincher was in response to a Democrat who said Jesus was very clear, you know, you ought to take care of the poor people. He said, the Bible says lots of things, <laughs> which, of course, it does. And you can, yeah. find that you can justify anything yeah. if, you, if yeah. you're going to uh, take one little thing. <laughs> the, the, the Bible does say, um, the poor you shall always have with you. Mm -hmm. But the Bible also says, what you did to the least of these, you did to me. I was hungry. You know, right. why didn't you feed me? But then right? in Thessalonians, there is, the, he who does not work shall not eat. <laughs> So there's this one line that has really uh, a linchpin of uh, the conservative side of the bar Bible argument right now. There's nothing like Christians who cite the Bible for, un for to support their unchristian doctrine or their unchristian policies, and that's exactly what's going on. The Bible case. says lots of things. The, <laughs> yeah, the, I know that the Bible says lots of things. Okay, now the other. So now they've having dealt with food stamps, um, they come. I mean. Again, this is all in the context, as we talked last week, of the latest figures on poverty from the Census Bureau. Fifteen percent of Americans living in poverty, right? So fifty million people. Fifty million people. What are we going? What are Republicans going to do? We're going to make them. We're going to put more people in poverty by, by. In fact, 
cutting that food stamp benefit will put more people in poverty, correct? Uh, v- yeah, very potentially. Uh, it does. Part of it, uh, one of the biggest parts of it, targets people who are at or above the actual poverty cutoff. Right. So potentially those people will not cross this arbitrary threshold of like $18,000 a year for a family of three. They'll have $18,050, and they won't officially count as poor uh, because of the loss of income. But yeah. potentially a few million people would. So they, that's one way that make it harder for the poor or for, the, or for you know, uh, um, those living at or near the poverty line. The other is um, they want to do away with or defund Obamacare. Right. right. Um, which finally, because of these health exchanges, uh, people who have never been able to afford uh, health insurance because they don't get it at their place of work will be able to get it. How does that work? Well, these exchanges are going online in a week. Yeah, and a week it, from today, October right. 1. Right. So it's there you'll be able to go and apply for and receive uh, a, a government-sanctioned private health insurance plan of some kind. And it's the, the cost will vary a lot depending on where you are and how old you are. Uh, but for a lot of people, it's going to be affordable insurance for the first time in their lives because this is when it will no longer be legal for these companies to discriminate you against uh, if you're sick. Right. Now, what – so and, – and, and I saw last night there's a choice of plans. These are, these are not government plans. They're private insurance plans are available, as you say, for the first time. Um, there's a bronze plan, the silver, the gold, and the platinum. Are you shopping for health insurance? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. But I'm saying I think I, – I, I'm fascinated by this because there's a huge um, – there are two campaigns going on right now. The administration and those who support universal health insurance are trying to get the word out, and I put myself in that category, trying to get the word out to people that this opportunity is there. You've got to take advantage of it, Right especially for young people, mm-hmm. right? So they, they do offer you a, a choice of plans. Uh, the more expensive the plan, the more higher your premium, the lower your deductible. Right. But it's geared so that everybody should be able to afford one of those plans, right? And then you get your choice of doctors, choice of hospitals, Not maybe not as many as you would if you had some Cadillac plan, you know, from... From, from your place of work, but at least you do have a choice. So it's a good deal for Americans, right? I, I think it will be for millions of people. That's what the Congressional Budget Office says. Right. Tens of millions of people, well, 20, 25, 30 million people are right. going to be able to get insurance now. Right. They, they had not been. 30 million is a figure that I've heard. And the rates that, they're, that are being quoted now are lower than what the Congressional Budget Office uh, predicted they would be. There's been some, yeah, there's been a little bit of a surprise. Some of the rates were lower. Yeah. I I heard from one person who was disappointed and said she would be getting an unaffordable option in California, and she's in her early 60s and is a cancer survivor. So I I think there will be a wide variety of outcomes, but you can't deny it's it's tens of millions of people, and this is something no one really talks about in Congress. Right. 